Hello everyone, and welcome back to another video in our series of Kreutzer Etudes. Today we are going to be talking all about Kreutzer number eight. Now, let's just start off by saying that Kreutzer number eight is definitely one of the most beloved Kreutzer Etudes, along with number two, of course, and then for many teachers and students, including myself, number seven. Almost all of the editions include at least some discussion of variations for how to practice number eight. Even the first edition itself, which uh, doesn't have too many variations written out for any etudes, does write out a few um, bowing patterns for number eight. And then of course, when we get into Massar, there are over 50 bowing patterns Glamian goes even further with over 60 bowing patterns for this one. And then quoting um, Edith Wynne in um, her book, How to Study Kreutzer, that we've been referencing, she uh, quotes uh, the famous violinist Joachim and says that Joachim described this etude as one of the finest for uh, varied bowing patterns. So you heard it here third hand, but let's hope that it's true. So why do we love uh, Kreutzer number no. eight so much? In my opinion, it sort of forms a bookend of our bowing technique exercises that we do um, all the way from Kreutzer number no. two through uh, Kreutzer number no. eight, where by this point we have practiced um, our beautiful detache in Martelet. We've practiced different bowing patterns in Kreutzer number no. two and Kreutzer number no. three as well. We've introduced string crossings in uh, Kreutzer number no. seven, and we've even begun to study some off the bow um, strokes, as well as some uh, down bow and up bow staccatos in the uh, etudes in between. So with all that in mind, Kreutzer eight becomes an etude where we can really look back and review all of that work that we did. And then of course, um, this etude is written in uh, triplets, so compared to Kreutzer number two, where we studied our duple bowing patterns, we will now study a trip, a triplet bowing patterns, but the same idea generally. We are also going to introduce a new stroke that we haven't talked about so far, and um, that will be the sautier. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, first things first, let's review um, the basic layout of variations for this etude. So we start, of course, um, with detache, and it is always encouraged to learn any of these etudes with detache or martelet as well if you want to uh, leave some spaces between the notes. But when we practice our detache for this one, make sure that we are paying attention to our arm levels since we're going to be changing strings we can definitely loosen up our wrist, which we started doing in the previous etude, um, number seven. And then also uh, we have a little bit of shifting to work on, especially going up into the fourth position, um, which we spend a lot of time in whenever we're playing anything in E major. So as always, learn this first um, with detache, focusing on beautiful intonation and arm levels. So just as a sneak preview, it will sound like this. So I'm playing mostly in the middle slash upper half, and that's where I really can let my forearm go. So not much more than that, just use this detache to learn the intonation and the prepare your arm levels. After that, um, let's get into the variations themselves. So I'm going, going to be referencing Galamian's order here. And Galamian starts off with a uh, few accent bowing patterns which we can use to begin training our coordination and those are variations one through five so feel free to use those if they're helpful helpful for you 
but usually we can just jump in starting from uh, variation six, which is actually going to combine a few of the rhythms that we see in uh, one through five. So starting with variation six and going all the way to 11, what we wanna be doing with these uh, rhythm coordination uh, variations are using martelets for the long notes, which are eighth notes. And then for the short notes, we're going to be using detache. So uh, variation number one will sound, or variation number six rather, will sound like this. Martelet, martelet, and then detaches. And we're roughly staying in the same part of the bow. Of course, a little bit more bow probably for those large martelets, and it won't be possible to use that much bow for the sextuplets, but that's the idea. So for example, uh, variation number 10, we'll have some detaches here, martelet, and then detache. So what are we focused on? Beautiful sound quality, really good coordination between the left and the right hand, and that will prepare us um, to move in to our next variations. And for what it's worth, it's always a good idea to practice um, fast passages with this type of rhythm work because it will train your ear and your uh, hands to coordinate really well. So moving on, um, after these rhythm variations, we now come to our bowing pattern variations. And these last um, basically from variation in the Galami edition from variation 12 all the way up to variation 41. And our discussion here will be very similar to our discussion of bowing patterns in Kreutzer number two. We have, um, as, as we like to think about it, two different types of bowing patterns. The first type are uh, bowing patterns which take us alternating between the lower and the upper half. So for example, if we look at number 12, we have a full bow here, and then we use smaller bows and stay in the upper half, followed by a full bow, and then lower half. So we're alternating between the halves, and that will be the same for any of these first variations. For example, number 13. just practicing different um, parts of our bow and as we move that bowing pattern around the string crossings and the bow changes um, will feel a little bit different so that's really the point of those bowing patterns and then as we met as we saw in uh, Kreutzer number two we have um, the odd bowing patterns where we have an odd number of notes in our slurred bows and those will require us to do some interesting bow division in order to get back to our starting point. So if we look at variation number 24, for example, we have three notes in a slur, and then we need to get back to the frog, like this. And then maybe using between um, half bows or even third of a bows, we take ourselves back to the frog. And that's going to, going to be the same for any of those odd bowing patterns between 12 and, like we said, all the way up to 41. And then, uh, just as another example, something like 34. again, switching between the upper half and the lower half. Great. So that then brings us to our next set of variations, which um, for us will be our uh, martelet practice. Although, as we'll see, we can also use these um, for some staccato practice, as we did in Kreutzer number four. 
So looking at starting at variation number 42, and this will go all the way down to variation 45, let's play these with martelets where we, we are going to use the whole bow um, for any uh, bow, uh, dip, any group of notes in one bow. So looking at 42, we have one note, and then two notes, and then three notes. So really good for bow division, and very similar to how we practiced our martelet bowing patterns in number two. And um, then, of course, we can do any different pattern of martelet. So here we would see it um, uh, with ones and fives, as in variation number 44. As you can imagine, we can also apply our down bow and up bow staccato as we practiced in uh, Kreutzer 4, I believe, where in this case, we are not as much focused on the impulses at the start of the notes, but rather on stopping our legatos in the middle of notes. So looking at variation number 45, we would have something like this. we can actually use this um, etude to play any of the strokes that we've practiced. It also can be used for spiccatos. It can be used for coles. And it can even be used for some ricochet. you to decide. Instead, what I do want to do before we get into some demonstrations um, is to talk about sautié, which is a stroke that we haven't discussed so far, but um, is incredibly uh, useful to practice in this etude, which is very well suited with its string crossings and changing of the arm levels, not as um, hard on your arm as number seven, but still gives a good workout. So what is the sautier stroke? The sautier is one of our bouncing strokes, but it is a bouncing stroke mostly um, in the way that it sounds. When we play it, we actually don't lift our bow and drop our bow the way that we would in our spiccato, for example, or the way that we would in our ricochet. Instead, the bouncing or springiness arrives naturally just based on the speed and the amount of weight that we allow the bow to have. So I'll link to a few Sautié um, instructional vi videos in the comments. But overall, one way to practice this is to be starting from a détaché stroke really with our forearm doing the motion and then slowly speed it up and bring it into a part of the bow that naturally bounces and then whenever we're ready we lift off some of the weight you can even practice by lifting some of your fingers off the bow and notice how that springy bow begins to bounce. So what you'll notice is that you can hear a bouncing articulation and you can see the bow itself moving up and down on the string, but the hair almost never leaves the string itself. 
it, there might be a little bit of up and down, but the string, uh, the hair pretty much stays on the string. And that would be overall the definition of the sauté stroke. But I do want to point out that at this point in our bow stroke repertoire, many of these terms are not so much concrete divisions of what your bow and your sound sounds like, but are rather identifying different points on a spectrum. And that spectrum is one in terms of sound quality. How deep are we into the bow versus how much space is there um, in every note? And it's also a spectrum in terms of technique. Where are we at on the bow? How much are we using a horizontal or vertical motion from our arms? And um, in this case, the sauté arises pretty naturally based on the um, speed of the notes that we want to create and the sound that we want to create. So uh, like Mimi Zweig teaches it, and um, like some other instructors who I'll link in the video teach it, it uh, feels quite natural to start with a detaché and then see what happens when we increase the speed and lighten off the weight. And um, that's just one of a few different ways to get to the sauté stroke. Some other instructors may uh, teach a little bit more flexibility of the wrist and come at it from that end. But overall, I do, I do want us to remember that these different bow strokes lie on a full spectrum of sound and of technique. Once we've practiced our sauté on open strings, probably, we will then apply it to our etude, starting with groups of four. Then two groups of three. And then two groups of two. So, just to recap, and maybe I'll say towards the end, is um, we do also have a few more variations in the Galamian edition, lasting from 46 all the way out to 61, which are just giving us a few different more rhythms and bowing patterns. And of course, you are, are free to explore those. And these will just be different combinations of martelets and detaches in uh, different parts of the bow and uh, challenging you to do your string tossings and your shifting um, at different speeds when those faster notes arise in the rhythmic patterns. So, a recap of everything that we just talked about. Um, we start off with detaché, just to learn the uh, notes, intonation, and arm levels. After that, we will introduce a few rhythmic patterns to practice our uh, coordination and also introduce our martelet. These will be variations um, 6 to 11, though you can also warm up with variations 1 to 5 if that's helpful. After this, we move into our classic detaché bowing patterns. These are from variations 12 all the way until 41, and those will come in two different groups. One group which um, takes you between the upper half and the lower half, and then another group which includes a, an odd number of notes in a slur and then encourages you to um, use some sort of creative bow division to get you back to your starting point. After this, we have our martelet um, slash up bow, down bow, staccato variations. Those come from numbers 42 all the way to 45 in the Galamine edition. If you're using martelet, you will probably use the same amount of bow for each um, grouping of notes and explore your bow division there. If you want to practice up bow and down bow staccato um, or spiccato, then we will just return to some of the same lessons that we had from etudes four until seven. And then finally, 
we um, introduce our sautee uh, stroke at this point in the Kreutzer Etudes, which we may have never studied before. And with all that in mind, let's have a demonstration. So here is Kreutzer number eight, and we'll start off with Detaché and then move through a few of the different variations. practicing.